Thank you very much for the invitation. It's an honor to be here. My assigned topic is aortic arch debranching. Um, I have travel expenses by Gore, and I have no experience in the use of multilayer stents uh, or dedicated aortic arch stent grafts. As you all know, ascending and proximal descending aortic pathology can be quite challenging. The treatment goals include to repair the pathology itself by minimizing an organ ischemia of the pets at risk. In the United States, open procedures continue to be the benchmark where we compare against the overall morbidity associated with open repair estimated to be in 62% and a mortality overall of 10% across the country. In the decision-making process, physiologic reserve, aneurysm location and extension, the valve uh, function, diameter of the native aorta approximately, the distance between the arch branches, and prior operations may influence ultimately what kind of operation or approach you will do. And you all see that open surgical repair is on one side of the bridge, the other side is what we all like to see, which is a total endovascular repair, and in the middle of the bridge, I think, is the hybrid options, whether they are open or endovascular. Now, hybrid repair theoretically allows uh, include patients that are not suitable for open surgery. It reduces the complexity of the procedure. And to be widely adopted, it really should overall decrease the morbidity and mortality of these procedures. Now, the deep branching of the aortic arch can be separated into dedicated technology by either French branches or fenestrations, which they are not commercially available in the United States, or a hybrid combination of technologies that are endovascular but were not designed to work together, like chimneys or in view of fenestrations, or the combination of open procedures and endovascular approaches. These are the art zones by uh, Dr. Criado's classification. We'll start with zone two, which is the origin of the subclavian artery on the left. There's no dedicated technology. In Japan, the Inoue single stent graft is being used and published since 2005. Um, an endovascular hybrid option for zone two is what we most commonly use. is a single chimney to the left subclavian and a retrograde exposure via the brachial artery or an in situ fenestration. Um, that I have personally no experience with. The more classic option is the left carotid to left subclavian bypass and then a TVAR coverage of the origin of the subclavian. This has been widely supported by the Society of Vascular Surgery guidelines uh, to be performed every time you electively cover the subclavian artery to prevent arm ischemia and paraplegia and posterior circulation uh, strokes. Regarding zone two, uh, zone one, there's, again, no dedicated technology available commercially in the United States. The endovascular hybrid options are by exposure of the left common carotid artery in a retrograde fashion, delivering a single chimney or periscope in the left common carotid, and then eventually deployed the uh, TVAR. It's also called double barrel technique in the European literature. Uh, the open option is a carotid to carotid bypass graft, extended then this uh, receiving vessel as a donor vessel to the left subclavian artery, and then ligation of both the proximal common carotid as well as the left subclavian to prevent endoleak. Then the endograft will be delivered retrograde and protecting the origin of the innominate artery in zone one. This is a case that we've done that shows a significant dilatation of the left subclavian artery origin with a very short distance uh, to the left common carotid artery. So in the preoperative uh, staging, uh, we have a very short proximal seal zone and a diameter proximally of about 38 millimeters and a distal of 36 with a total coverage treatment length of 20. So what we did was a right carotid to left carotid bypass, a retropharyngeal tunneling with proximal stumps being ligated and the left carotid to the left subclavian bypass with an 86 millimeter PTFE and a second stage TVAR procedure. And this is uh, the intraoperative pictures of that particular uh, operation. We, s we use a single device, was extubated and discharged in, on day one. Uh, zone zero, there is dedicated technology uh, out there in the world. Japan seems to be taking the lead on developing this uh, and utilizing it. Uh, circulation 1999, the Inoue triple branch graft, uh, and a recent update of the Nahuda a pre curved fenestrated system was uh, last year presented in VEATH and published back in 2008. Um, regarding, again, uh, endovascular hybrid options, 
the double chimney or the sandwich technique presented by Dr. Lobato, as well as the hybrid options that Dr. Tudor presented and published back in 2003, a single branch in uh, innominate artery stain graft with uh, subsequent bypassing. Uh, again, these are not commercially available. So this is uh, Dr. Tudor's uh, paper referring to a single uh, innominate artery branch. The double chimney technique for ZOM0 published uh, recently in the European Journal of Vascular um, puts uh, retrograde uh, delivery of innominate artery and left common carotid artery into the uh, ascending aorta slightly deeper than the TVAR component. Uh, this overlaps in about three to seven centimeters estimated and oversizes stent graft up to 30%. Uh, percent. Uh, this creates the issue on, on gutter leaks like any other sandwich technique or periscope techniques that they are labeled type 1C leaks. And again, I think they should add the common carotid to the left subclavian bypass to the reduction of strokes and spinal cord. The way we approach this uh, type of cases today is, and depends on the anatomy, if you have more than two centimeters uh, proximal landing zone in the ascending aorta, or the diameter is more than, less than 40 millimeters, we approach with a minimal invasive, uh, with a minimal uh, sternotomy, uh, and then we subsequently perform a subclavian to carotid bypass, ascending to the left carotid, and ascending to the right carotid in that uh, sequence, and then the TVAR stage. And these images are from the Duke group, um, recently published in JVS as well. Now, if the proximal zone is less than two centimeter and the ascending aorta is more than 40 or more than 40, then a hemi-arch uh, replacement has to be performed and then a stage two, a carotid subclavian and a T-var. When the ascending and descending pathology has no uh, zone for proximal landing, then a total arch replacement is indicated and then leaving an elephant trunk that subsequently can be uh, bridged with a T-var device. We published uh, um, our case back in 2008 of an elective aneurysm of 5.2 centimeter ascending and a 5.7 descending aneurysm. While he was uh, being worked up, he expanded acutely and presented with uh, contained rupture. His proximal 30, uh, arch was 34 to 40 millimeters in a reverse funnel and has less than 1.5 centimeters in length. So there were several options there to address. And what we end up doing was an open and endovascular approach in the single setting since he was contained with rupture. We perform an arch reconstruction with an elephant track under secondary arrest. And once the patient was rewarmed, two tag devices were placed in a retrograde delivery via the uh, wire system and suture the tag to the stain graft. Possible course was complicated by the small embolism and was discharged home. So in conclusions, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, open repair remains the gold standard for fit patients. A total endovascular arch repair is in the future. Until then, hybrid procedures expands the pool of patients treated. They require a stratified approach with reasonable outcomes and bring new challenges, for example, the type 1C endoleak. Thank you very much.